Trauma in pregnancy presents a unique challenge, requiring us to care for two patients simultaneously, the mother and the fetus, while navigating the anatomical and physiological changes of pregnancy. This lecture aims to equip healthcare providers with a clear, evidence-based approach to managing trauma in pregnant patients, emphasizing rapid assessment, maternal stabilization, and fetal considerations. Respiratory System Tidal volume increases, while respiratory rate remains stable, leading to a slightly reduced arterial CO2 partial pressure. This physiological respiratory alkalosis means pregnant patients have less reserve to compensate for hypoxia or hypercapnia. Cardiovascular system. Blood pressure is typically lower and pulse rate is elevated. In the third trimester, the gravid uterus can compress the inferior vena cava when the patient is supine, reducing cardiac output and risking sudden maternal collapse. Manual leftward displacement of the uterus is critical to mitigate this. Hematologic system. Physiological hypervolemia partially protects maternal circulation during hypovolemia, but the placenta experiences selective blood flow reduction, making the fetus highly vulnerable to hypoxia. Gastrointestinal system. Delayed gastric emptying increases the risk of aspiration, particularly in patients with altered consciousness or requiring sedation. These changes demand a tailored approach to trauma care, prioritizing rapid correction of hypoxia and hypovolemia while anticipating complications unique to pregnancy. The goal of management of trauma in pregnancy is to stabilize the mother to stabilize the fetus. The core principles of trauma care, airway, breathing, circulation, apply to pregnant patients, with specific modifications. Aggressive treatment of hypoxia and hypovolemia. Hypoxia must be corrected immediately with high-flow oxygen. Hypovolemia requires rapid fluid resuscitation, and if blood transfusion is needed, use cytomegalovirus-negative blood to minimize fetal risk. Early recognition of shock is critical, as maternal hypervolemia can mask signs of blood loss until decompensation occurs. Uterine displacement. In the third trimester, prevent inferior vena cava compression by manually displacing the uterus to the left or tilting the patient on a spinal board. Avoid wedges as they may rotate the spine and exacerbate spinal injuries. Aspiration risk. Pregnant patients are at heightened risk of aspiration pneumonia or Mendelssohn syndrome. For those with reduced consciousness or requiring sedation or anesthesia, Administer intravenous ranitidine 50 mg or intravenous omeprazole 40 mg to reduce gastric acidity. Rhesus D-negative patients. Abdominal trauma can trigger isoimmunization in rhesus D-negative mothers carrying a rhesus-positive fetus. Blood group testing is essential and anti-D immunoglobulin should be administered promptly to prevent antibody formation. Collaboration with the obstetric team is vital from the outset. Their expertise ensures comprehensive maternal and fetal assessment, particularly when delivery may be indicated. The fetus's well-being depends on maternal stability. Hypoxia or hypoperfusion can lead to rapid fetal deterioration, even after a period of apparent normalcy. Initial fetal assessment includes Auscultation Use a Pienaard stethoscope or Doppler fetoscope to monitor fetal heart rate. Fetocardiotocography, FCTG. This provides continuous monitoring of fetal heart rate and uterine activity, aiding in the detection of distress. Abdominal ultrasonography. This evaluates fetal viability, placental integrity, and potential abruption. In late pregnancy, urgent delivery may be necessary to protect both mother and fetus. Caesarean section is preferred when time and maternal stability allow. In extreme cases, such as witness traumatic cardiac arrest or imminent maternal collapse, a resuscitative hysterotomy or perimortem caesarean section may be indicated. This procedure can improve maternal cardiac output by relieving aortocaval compression and, in rare instances, may save the fetus if performed within minutes of maternal death. Special Considerations in Trauma Spinal Precautions Pregnant patients with suspected spinal injuries require careful handling. Leftward uterine displacement must balance the need for spinal immobilization to avoid exacerbating cord damage. 
Radiographic Imaging When imaging is necessary, such as CT or X-ray, shield the fetus to minimize radiation exposure, but do not delay critical diagnostics. The risk of maternal instability outweighs potential fetal risks. Multidisciplinary Approach Trauma in pregnancy demands seamless coordination among emergency physicians, obstetricians, trauma surgeons, and anesthesiologists. Early activation of these teams optimizes outcomes. Here are some practical tips for the emergency department. 1. Act fast, think dual. Always consider the fetus when managing a pregnant trauma patient. Stabilize the mother's airway, breathing, and circulation as the first step to fetal survival. 2. Position strategically. Manually displace the uterus or tilt the patient to the left in the third trimester to maintain cardiac output. 3. Anticipate aspiration. Proactively administer gastric acid suppressants in at-risk patients to reduce the likelihood of Mendelssohn syndrome. 4. Monitor closely. Use FCTG and ultrasonography to track fetal status, but prioritize maternal resuscitation. 5. Prepare for delivery. In late pregnancy, be ready for urgent cesarean section or resuscitative hysterotomy. Time is critical. Consult obstetrics early. In conclusion, trauma in pregnancy is a high-stakes scenario that tests our ability to think and act swiftly for two lives. By understanding the physiological nuances of pregnancy, prioritizing maternal stabilization, and integrating fetal assessment, we can optimize outcomes in these complex cases. As emergency physicians, our role is to lead with confidence, collaborate effectively, and remain vigilant for the unique challenges this dual patient scenario presents.